Welcome, I'm here today with Kate Patton, who is a registered dietitian in our preventive cardiology program, and she talks a lot to patients and groups about eating heart healthy. So Kate, what makes a recipe heart healthy? So I think a heart healthy recipe, uh, you should keep an eye on um, the nutritional value from basically how much uh, fat is in that recipe, um, paying attention to the protein source maybe in that recipe, and carbohydrates. So choosing whole grains is going to be a good source of, of carbohydrates. Um, vegetables are good carbohydrate to include, focusing on lean proteins, and then really kind of assessing the type of fat that's in the recipe. So res we're going to lean towards more plant-based fats than, than animal fats. Um, and also keep an eye on um, the extra things that might be added. So sugar is a not so good carbohydrate that we want to try to lower the intake of, at least added sugar. Um, also keep an eye on how much like sodium is in that recipe too. Mm -hmm. So we were just at a um, talk together and so many people had questions about recipes for baked goods related to butter mm -hmm. and what they could do with those favorite family recipes? Sure, so um, a lot of recipes, you know, you won't change the taste or consistency mm -hmm. if you replace um, up to half the amount of like mm -hmm. the added fat with something like an unsweetened applesauce or mashed bananas um, to help cut out some of that fat from say butter, but just up to half. You still want some in there to, to have the right texture and flavor. Um, a lot of other options too with, with butters is nowadays there are some like lighter butter kind of spreads that are um, you know half um, butter and half like canola oil so it's a little bit better mix mixture of the fats mm -hmm. um, other kind of recipes with uh, baked goods uh, to help cut out fat um, same thing you can if it if a recipe calls for oil you can cut out some of that oil for kind of a softer consistency kind of fruit blend that would help. Mm -hmm. And what about talking about oils? Mm -hmm. Like what are the best oils to use? Yeah, so uh, as far as like cooking with like heat kind of oils, um, so extra virgin olive oil has a lot of heart protective benefits, but um, heating it can actually hurt and kind of denature um, and kill the benefits that extra virgin olive oil has. So that should just be like used at room temperature uh, just as like a dressing or a dip. Um, other oils though, like olive oil from the later pressings, you can cook with and saute a little bit with um, canola oil, peanut oil, those are good. Canola oil often is used in, in baking, um, has a little bit more of the omega-3, excuse me, a little bit more of monounsaturated fats, mm -hmm. which is a little better um, than like a vegetable oil would be. Um, so, yep, using, you know, small amounts of oils with sautéing. If you're really following a really low-fat diet, uh, patients uh, could use broth instead of oil when you're sautéing or cooking. And what about um, some people um, um, had questions about, like, if they like to use mayonnaise? Mm -hmm. So that's another fat. Sure. So a good substitute for that would be um, if you really want that mayo texture and consistency, there are some healthier versions that are made from olive oil and canola oil. So that would have a little bit more at least of the healthy fat and less of the saturated fat. Um, or again, if your cholesterol is high and you're really trying to kind of cut back on saturated fat and cholesterol, um, then we want you to replace the animal fats with, with more of the plant-based fats, monounsaturated fats. So using avocado as a spread on a sandwich or um, using like some hummus as a spread or just mm -hmm. using again olive oil and, and vinegar um, to, to either you know, add to some tuna to keep it moist or drizzle on a sandwich mm -hmm. uh, to keep it moist. And I would definitely encourage using more oil-based salad dressings rather than the creamy salad mm -hmm. dressing. So just real extra virgin olive oil and vinegar, or to give more flavor, you can add something like Dijon mustard. Um, some people use like actually egg whites in, in salad dressings to kind of whisk that up and give it some more texture. And then just adding say garlic or onions. If you want to make it a little bit sweet, you know, add a little bit of honey. Mm -hmm. But I really encourage patients to try and make their own homemade salad dressing. Okay. I mean, A, because it's really quick and easy, and B, you, you know, get a lot of, um, a lot more healthy fats if you're using that extra virgin olive oil. Mm -hmm. And then um, you're getting a lot less sodium too, because mm -hmm. prepackaged um, salad dressings have a lot of salt in them. And some salad dressings can also have a lot of salt, or excuse me, sugar added too. Okay. So this way you're kind of controlling it. Mm -hmm. 
What about, um, you know, we're getting sometimes for holidays or entertaining and things like that. And what if you like a lot of sour cream or dips mm -hmm. and things like that? Yeah, that's a great point. So a great alternative for a sour cream as far as um, dips and recipes, I think, is substituting mm -hmm. non-fat um, plain Greek yogurt. I think it really tastes very, very similar, mm -hmm. um, has that same kind of taste. Uh, and so you're going to, the 0% uh, you know, won't have any fat, whereas regular sour cream is really high in fat. But it's the same consistency, it's you know, really mm -hmm. thick, and I think it still has that same tart flavor. Mm -hmm. um, so for dips, yeah, definitely use that Greek yogurt. Okay. Um, is there anything else that we should know about dairy products, or can we just use mm -hmm. milk? I mean, there's sometimes people say use whole milk, don't use whole milk. Sure, yeah. So if you're if it's a recipe that's you know mm -hmm. calling for cream or you know a creamy soup, uh, I would if you're trying to be more health, mm -hmm. heart, heart healthy, we want to try to to limit the amount of animal fats right. um, from saturated fats. So uh, you know, obviously the. It, you know, a lower fat version, mm -hmm. better for most people. Mm -hmm. You know, if it's a special occasion, you want to use a little bit of whole milk and your cholesterol level's fine or you really want that thick taste, then again, in moderation or mm -hmm. use a little bit of whole, a little bit of 2% or something mm -hmm. like that. Um, but yeah, going for those lower fat milks mm -hmm. um, would be better, especially instead of something like heavy cream or, or real right. cream, which is gonna make it really thick. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of times in, in soup recipes, you can cut out cream and use some kind of pureed vegetable too to add that mm -hmm. like thickness. So whether it's like pureed you know, potatoes or leeks or some kind of pureed bean, that'll mm -hmm. give it a lot of like thick, thick texture to the soup mm -hmm. um, without the fat and more fiber. Mm -hmm. Um, people, there's a lot of questions about sugar, mm -hmm. you know, both in baking and then adding sugar to rest, you know, even your yeah. coffee. Yes, so. yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. So there's definitely, you know, room for some uh -huh. added sugar in our right, diets. Um, right. You know, there is room for that. It's just when, you know, you're drinking though a sugary drink like a soda and that has, you know, lots and lots of, of sugar, then you're mm -hmm. easily going to go over your limit for the day if, if you're drinking soda and drinking sugary drinks. But if it's just adding one teaspoon of real sugar mm -hmm. into your coffee here or there, I think that's definitely mm -hmm. appropriate. Um, when it comes to baked goods, obviously those you know have a lot of sugar in it, you're using that for a lot of flavor. Mm -hmm. um, but a lot of you know bakers and, and chefs say that you know you can easily substitute out like just a third of whatever the recipe calls for of sugar um, and it's still gonna taste sweet. Yeah. <laughs> so you could just automatically you know eliminate a third of the, the called for sugar. Um, and if you want to replace that with a little bit for still extra sweetness, replace that with something like, you know, some kind of mashed fruits like unsweetened applesauce or banana, mm -hmm. you know, and like cookie and cake and bread or muffin recipes that still mm -hmm. usually they hold up pretty well. Um, as far as another idea too to give flavor, you know, if you're substituting out some of the sugar but want some extra flavor, you know, maybe adding like a little bit more vanilla extract to mm -hmm. give it that flavor or using something like an almond extract or lemon or orange extract that can give a lot of mm -hmm. good, you know, good flavor or even things like cinnamon um, or if it's, like I said, like a bread or cookie recipe, even just adding dried fruit too. Mm -hmm. That way it gives it some natural sweetness. Mm -hmm. um, from so somebody um, had a question during our talk about agave and mm -hmm. using some of these other alternative sugars. Right, yeah. So you you could, uh, you know, depending on the mm -hmm. recipe, yep, do that. So um, agave has a little bit lower, what we call glycemic index, so it digests and turns into sugar a little bit slower. Mm -hmm. um, still, you know, a form of sugar though, right. so not going to make a significant difference. Um, okay. but yeah, Sometimes people think because they're using something else, Mm -hmm. that that's good for you and then you know it negates any negative. right it's better than say yeah, white sugar but right, right. it's still sugar mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, we have a lot of patients that are on low sodium diets so they mm -hmm. have to watch their salt too yes um, what tips do you have for that yeah so that's a good question so I definitely number one you know encourage starting up by reading those nutrition facts labels and mm -hmm. getting an eye for uh, you know how much sodium is in some of the foods that they're using and salad dressings and you know soups mm -hmm. and condiments that can be really eye-opening so kind of start there and then try and find alternatives uh, you know to those things so alternatives to actually just the salt shaker would mm -hmm. just be using different herb and spice 
spice blends. Mm -hmm. So lots of options, lots of different brands carry different spice blends. Just check the ingredients too, though, to make sure mm -hmm. there isn't any other like hidden source of sodium that it's really just herbs and spices. Um, starting there, also using you know fresh herbs um, is a great. So you know growing your own if you can, basil and things mm -hmm. like that. It'll give foods a lot of flavor. Uh, I mentioned kind of salad dressings, how to substitute, um, you know, making a homemade one rather than using the store-bought versions. And oils and vinegars and fruit juices, those are great uh, to use as a marinade too. Mm -hmm. um, so a lot of store-bought prepackaged marinades are really high in sodium. Okay. So watch out for that mm -hmm. and try using your own. Um, and then, you know, onion and garlic can give foods a lot of flavor um, without all that extra salt, too. Mm -hmm. So I'm a big pasta lover. Okay. I love pasta and bread and, mm -hmm. and things like that. And um, there's a lot of discussion about carbs and trying mm -hmm. to decrease white flowers and things like that. Sure. So how do you, what do you do for a replacement for that? Sure. So a lot of patients who are on, you know, lower carb diets, mm -hmm. um, you're right. So good alternative would be, you know, swap out some of that pasta for mm -hmm. more of like a vegetable based pasta. Mm -hmm. um, so something like using actual like spiralized zucchini noodles or spaghetti squash is a great mm -hmm. substitute um, for the pasta. Um, there are um, pastas out there too that are um, made from like beans. Um, mm -hmm. So there's like chickpea pastas out there and black bean pastas. So those just have kind of a again better composition with more protein and fiber mm -hmm. um, than traditional white pasta would have. Um, also, you know, rice is something that's kind of high in carbohydrates and really dense, just like pasta. So, you know, now it's pretty easy to find riced cauliflower, either freshly, you know, riced or frozen. Mm -hmm. um, you can even find riced vegetable blends with like carrots and broccoli too. Mm -hmm. So that's a great alternative to either completely substitute rice or blend in with rice. Mm -hmm. um, if you're cutting back on carbs, you'd also want to watch out for the potatoes. So a good alternative for potatoes is like mashed cauliflower. Mm -hmm. um, good way to get those veggies in. Mm -hmm. A lot of people, even in um, kind of recipes like macaroni and cheese, people some, sometimes sub out like the cheese for, say, like um, butternut squash or even like <laughs> pumpkin to kind of still give that same color, uh -huh. um, but less of the fat from the cheese. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, that would be <laughs> <laughs> questionable a little taste, questionable. Right, right, right. a new taste, mm -hmm. but it sounds like it could be really some good ideas as far as mm -hmm. like switching things out and getting some new vegetables and, you know. Right. Yeah. Um, so when you talk to people, um, you know, and they've lived uh, one way for a long time mm -hmm. and followed the same recipes as probably their moms taught mm -hmm. them. What are the challenges and what do you tell patients when they are kind of, you know, a little skeptical about making all these changes? Well, I try to, you know, find out what they can kind of live without. So, mm -hmm. you know, where can they make some changes or substitutions and then figure out what they want to keep mm -hmm. the same uh, and then try to have them, you know, modify, you know, recipes just, you know, slowly, like I said, by just using a little bit less sugar or, mm -hmm. You know, instead of frying, people tend to use air fryers mm -hmm. a lot, so that's a great alternative. Um, just, like I said, trying to make little swaps and substitutions, whether it's sodium or sugar, um, and just, you know, give them the ideas and, um, you know, see mm -hmm. what they can mm -hmm. see what they can do. But yeah, kind of take those baby steps and, and make small changes, like, you know, you don't want to completely overhaul a recipe and, and not have it taste good. Okay. So you've given us a lot of very good tips for uh, people who are trying to eat heart healthy. Mm -hmm. I really appreciate your time here today. Sure, happy to be here. Thank you for joining us.